Hello, my name is Kevin Matthews, and uh, I'm the owner of Advanced Orthopedic Design. I'm an orthodist. I've been practicing for 32 years. And I wanted to talk today a little bit about spina bifida and bracing for spina bifida, primarily AFOs because that's the most popular design that we use. We do use other orthoses. We'll touch on those a little bit. And orthosis is an orthopedic brace, uh, typically custom made. Uh, and with spina bifida, what we're doing is we're augmenting weak musculature uh, based on the patient's deficits. In other words, with spina bifida you have paralysis affecting uh, muscles, groups of muscles, based on the level of the lesion or where the, uh, uh, the spina bifida occulta or the level of, of the, the region in the spine where the nerves are affected. Um, typically we're talking about lower back or lumbar level lesions. Once you get to lesions in the thoracic area, ambulation becomes much more of an issue and you require much more bracing in order to be able to ambulate. And we're not going to go into those today. So starting with just a, a, a minor level of lesion would be where you have muscles affecting the intrinsic or small muscles of the foot, where you have maybe just pronation or flat-footedness or mild instability at the ankle. And you could do something like a UCB, which is just a, a foot orthotic that's trimmed below the ankles to give side-to-side -side stability, support the arch, just protect the integrity of the foot with minimal intervention. Um, if you have a little bit more instability at the ankle, need a little more support, and an SMO might be indicated, a supramolar orthosis. It just goes right above the ankles, does the same thing. It's designed to provide support for uh, uh, medial lateral instabilities or side-to-side -side instabilities, support the arch, protect the integrity of the foot. Now, when it comes to uh, AFOs, ankle foot orthoses, meaning you have deficits that affect the ankle motion and strength at the ankle. Uh, there are a myriad of designs. We're going to go over a few. And basically, you design the brace based on the deficit, like I said. So what we're talking about is medial lateral instabilities, or side-to-side -side instabilities, meaning instabilities going this way or this way, and also dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. So dorsiflexion is the motion of the foot and toes coming up. Plantar flexion is the toes going down or pushing off. If you simply have a deficit affecting the dorsiflexors, the muscles that pick up the toes, then you could use a simple design that's hinged with a spring to pick up the toes to facilitate toe clearance and uh, allow for normal gait so that you don't catch your toe when you walk. What's important with spina bifida is that you have a well-molded foot plate, that it supports and controls the foot, and that the heel is vertical. That it, in other words, it's not offset, it's not in valgus or varus uh, alignment. Now sometimes with spina bifida, you'll have a little bit of an offset to the ankle, but as long as the heel is vertical and everything else is supported and protected, that's what's important along with augmenting the functional deficits or weakness by helping to pick up the toes. If you have a, a tendency to lock the knee back into hyperextension or just lock the knee back when, when you walk, you might want to put a plantar flexion stop on there this blocks the leg from going back too far to help protect the integrity at the knee uh, so that you don't develop hyperextension over time. So then you might use a, a bumper back here to block the leg from going back too far. Another design, and probably the most popular design, is the, the solid ankle AFO. This is just thin plastic that is 
or thicker plastic for larger kids or adults that holds the foot in the best alignment we can achieve for that individual patient. And it basically augments weak dorsiflexors and plantar flexors and maintains the vertical heel, protects the integrity and structure of the foot. And it is a probably by far the most popular design used for spina bifida and typically it's both legs that are affected. These should be, if not comfortable, tolerable. They shouldn't cause any skin redness. And with spina bifida, you don't have, you have loss of the motor nerves, but also sensory nerves. So you need to watch the skin very closely. Any redness that lasts longer than 20 or 30 minutes needs to be addressed by the orthodist because that can result in callus formation or blisters or sores that can become a, a chronic issue uh, in this patient population. They don't feel a poor fit, but their skin will show it. So you want to make sure that you observe the skin and any blemishes that stick around be addressed by the orthodist. Another design that's popular is the leaf spring design. It allows free motion into dorsiflexion and some give at heel strike or plantar flexion, uh, primarily used for weak dorsiflexors and just side to side stability. This is uh, another popular design that works well for those higher functioning uh, patients. In other words, the level of their lesion is lower, their paralysis is less. It works very much on the same lines as a hinged AFO with spring assist. This is just less plastic maintains alignment, doesn't get the full range of motion, but is an effective design for weak dorsiflexors or the muscles that pick the toe up. Now, once you get a little bit bigger, and if you have deficits affecting the muscles that pick up the toes and the muscles that push off, uh, again, the solid design is the most popular with the little ones, once you get a little bigger, you need something with a little bit more integrity. And I like the floor reaction design because this design comes up high in the front, right below the knee itself. There's a little bump of the, the tibial tubercle here. This trim line is up high there to get force on the knee. And this design is indicated when you have weakness of the quadriceps, the muscles that straighten out the leg, uh, which is fairly common with spina bifida. And the difference between the trim lines on these two is the solid ankle AFO is trimmed below the neck of the fibula about three quarters of an inch to an inch. So it's trimmed here where the floor reaction design is trimmed up here. So you get much better leverage against the knee and the foot and the ankle. And the benefit to this design is having weak plantar flexors of the muscles that push off are for me, every bit as significant as weak dorsiflexors or muscles that pick up the toe. And with weak quadriceps, patients have to lean into the front shell in order to keep the knee from buckling or fatiguing too quickly. With the floor reaction design, because the ankle is very strong, it doesn't flex very easily at all, that limitation in flexion holds the knee in extension when weight is going through the leg. So when the, patient, when the patient stands on it, they can basically rest into the front shells and the brace will hold them up. Um, it's important that this alignment be correct and that it allows a little bit of flexion at the knee and they're not locking the knee in extension. And then the patient needs to learn to walk and depend on this brace to keep them upright, by the ankle not flexing, it will hold them up, the patient up, as long as their weight is going through the leg. And it's not carried off to the side, but basically loaded through axial loading or loading of the brace. It has a ground reaction force against the knee to hold the knee in extension. So for the older kids, nine, 10, and up uh, that are a little bit bigger, typically. This design is great. They have a lot of problems 
And I found over the year with breakage, this population with weakness of the extensors of the knee and the foot and the ankle, they have a tendency to crack their AFOs. This design, I call the Texas Turbo, is uh, has a long reinforcing strut, so it's very strong. Breakage is really very rare in this design, and this design is durable, will last, and will typically not crack. I've had, I've done probably 300 of these, maybe more, a lot of this design, and I've had two or three break. So they're, they're, the breakage is very minimal, and when they're when they break, there was either perhaps a flaw in our process, or they're just really leaning on them, and then you just you know remake them. That's what you got to do if you break them. But these are pretty bulletproof and very effective. There are some other designs, uh, the carbon fiber AFOs. You can go online and research that are kind of flimsy, but they're good for you know replacing something like this. Uh, it's just. With spina bifida, I prefer to have a custom molded arch and foot plate uh, that basically supports and protects the foot. Also, because of the intrinsic muscle weakness, you can end up with midfoot issues. So if you use one of those carbon fiber designs, you should use a custom foot orthotic with it so that you maintain the foot and protect the foot, or even a UCB with it to get even more protection. Uh, with spina bifida because of the other muscle involvement. Um, so those are just basic designs for spina bifida uh, and I just wanted to kind of get that information out there for people who are researching or interested in brace design for this patient population. I want to briefly go over a little bit higher functional deficits uh, with KAFO. This is a knee ankle foot orthosis this is for a patient with spina bifida, small child, two to three years old, uh, single upright with a lock. They, this, they typically cannot hold their weight through their knee without the knee buckling. So what they have a tendency to do is to lock the knee back. If you get the knee back beyond or behind midline, then the knee isn't going to buckle forward. The problem with that, when they carry the knee hyperextended is it will over time get worse and they will develop contractures at the foot to compensate. If you put them in a hinged AFO that doesn't allow the hyperextension, well then the knee buckles and they fall. So if you have that situation, you want to protect the knee and give them stability. Uh, I like to use for the smaller kids a single upright KFO with a keeper so that they can work on walking perhaps without with the knee flexing in physical therapy and if they can develop the strength and coordination to walk with this unlocked well then they can drop down to, to a simple AFO but initially we want them safe so we can lock the knee so that they can walk with the knee fixed. Now you can get away with a single upright on small kids. Once the kids get a little bit bigger you need to go to a double upright design. This strap here basically is an infrapropeller strap and it holds the knee from buckling inside the brace and then just a solid AFO design with, excuse me, with drop lock. This, this one doesn't have keepers. This patient needs this knee locked. So as soon as they stand up, the knee locks and they want to sit. They simply raise the joints, unlock the knee and then they can sit. And then again, as soon as they hit full extension, it automatically locks. So that's KFO designs. And then you for higher levels, you can go with RGOs, which is two KFOs with a pelvic pan for reciprocating gait. That's quite a contraction. And uh, it's, they're effective and they work. And it, it's good to get these kids up walking. But it's a big old <laughs> bracing system. And uh, I don't want to get too far into the weeds. I basically wanted to touch base on AFO designs and by far for the bigger kids and the adult population this design is what works the best. It's very strong. It gives them the support, the stability that they need uh, in gait and it's just important that you get the, the alignment correct with the knee slightly anterior or in front of the ankle for good posture and good toe clearance in gait. Um, 
thanks for taking time. I hope this information was good for you and might have answered some questions you had. Uh, good luck and have a great day.